that late. This is true. Mm. I just want to have to avoid Twitter today, so screw it. I have a Twitch membership, and it was available on Twitch right away, so I watched it. <sighs> so, welcome to the Northern Ends Podcast. This is episode 124. 124. Holy gosh. Of a knitting podcast brought to you by two friends in fiber coming to you from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. The and Canadian Empires and one quadruped. You don't drink coffee, babe. We have this discussion every morning. <laughs> every morning, it's still stinky coffee. Yep, Who may waiting. or may not leave my hair alone because our favorite thing to do is play with wet hair. All right. We may have uh, a guest quadruped today. Well, I towel dry it, and then I'll be sitting on the bed getting dressed, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm lazy and old, so I'll sit down to get dressed. And then all of a sudden, I, I feel little paws in the back of my hair. Because she's sat behind me, and she's running her paws through my hair. And then I hear, because she's chewing on it. She's just wet hair. I don't know why. I've had a couple of cats like that. They're like, wet hair! Ah! So if I'm sitting at like the computer chair... It's the same thing. She has to be up on my chest, playing with my hair. I don't get any work done. <laughs> I've learned to shower, get up, and do my day stuff that involves being upwardly mobile till my hair's three quarters dry, because then it gets left alone. It's important. My life is structured up. This is technically a knitting podcast. I'm Jocelyn. My co-host is... Diana. And I'm making sure the internet can't see my bra. Yikes! Listen, I'm a girl... That's how you hold them up. It's a thing. It's a thing. It happens to be a very comfortable one today. Because it's a Saturday, not a Sunday. So I don't have a ton of progress on a lot of things. Diana's leaving me. No, she's not. She's, <laughs> she's going to America for a week. So we're recording a day early this week. So if you're getting this late on audio, it's because Jocelyn couldn't figure out how to get it to work as usual. And you only get it on YouTube till Diana can come home and rescue me. <laughs> Listen. I, did, I did leave detailed instructions, but... The instructions are well written. Uh, no, I, are they updated for the new links and stuff? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, the, they're, I read them and they made a super detailed sense. I'm like, okay, I can do this. I go step by step. I follow... No, something borks every freaking time. I'm like... Hmm. I'm like that person who closes the store at the end of the day, but can't remember to put the cash in the Dropbox. Like, I, can't, I just can't figure out this one little thing. And when it clicks, it'll be fine, but it, it hasn't clicked yet. So maybe it clicks. Maybe it doesn't click. We'll see how it goes. Um, suppose now I'll let you know what we're going to cover this week, because even though we just did show notes, I've already forgotten. All right. <laughs> this week we've got What's in Our Cup, Woolly Workings, Yarn on the Go, Wool Gathering, Knitterature, and Events. Ta-da! Uh-oh, <gasps> there goes my ball of yarn on the floor. What is in your cup today? Uh, coffee, because I just got up for the day. Literally, it's just a French vanilla coffee literally out of my Keurig machine, guys. <laughs> Diana showed up and I was eating my oatmeal for breakfast. <laughs> it's afternoon, for the record. Uh, it is, but I this was is... up till 3, like 3.34. This is a very Definitely strange occurrence that I'm... I am up before Jocelyn. This never happens. I'm rarely up that late. It's a very strange day. I am incredibly rarely up that late. And that was a hard, I was just, it was just a lot of stuff happened. And I wasn't able to finish my list till that late. And I was like, it's fine. We're recording sometime on Saturday, maybe. Diana never phones before like two in the afternoon. I'm good. She called before noon. That never happens when we're recording. I'm sorry. I just I had to shake things up this week. Oh, this is the week you needed change? Sure. Yeah. Yep. Got to keep you on your toes. Mm -hmm. That's one way of phrasing it. I think the other one was when I looked at my phone and I said, it's not Diana, I'm going to be really angry. Because <laughs> it woke me up. Oh. <laughs> and I cracked my eyeballs like, oh, it's Diana. Okay. We're okay. We're good. <laughs> If it had been my mom, I would have been like, I don't love you enough for this. I've only been asleep for four and a half, five hours. Call me later. <laughs> oh, dear. She would have been like, sure. Except I'm going to talk to you for an hour first. Oh, uh... dear. <laughs> no. Oh, I screwed up my increases. Are you drinking some water? Uh, no, actually. I did that thing where you make yourself some tea for breakfast and then uh, forget about it. 
And then as you're going out the door, you remember that you had tea. So I put it in a travel mug. Okay, okay, that's fair. I've done that. My coffee's in a tea mug. I have um, a CS Games 2016 travel mug, oh, limited edition. No, it's a it was free swag, wasn't it? It, it was. I uh -huh. went to a programming competition in 2016 and I got a travel mug. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I, we both have skipped the dishes water yeah, containers. Yeah. Which when we go places together, I can't bring. Otherwise, whose is whose because they're identical. We'll have to tie a ribbon on somebody's. Somebody. We gotta somehow we gotta mark one of the two of them so that we know whose is whose. Anyway, the tea that I made myself this morning was mm. Canadian breakfast from 360 in <sighs> Selkirk. When are you taking me to Selkirk? I, I sound so bossy about it. I can't drive, so I can't leave the city. And 360 Tea is a wonderful freaking tea shop, and I want to go. And Diana's like, yeah, we'll go. We never go, guys. She never takes me. She promises me, and then we don't do it. I'm very okay, upset, because well, we need, we need I like tea. We need to make a very specific plan that goes on my calendar, and then it'll happen. Yes. Well, we'll do that not in August. Yeah. We'll do that in September. That sounds like a better plan. Neither one of us have time this month. <laughs> I think you're back in town for less than a week before my parents show up for a week. Oh, well. <laughs> That's all right. I might be going uh, backwards hiking, camping the weekend after I get back. Weren't you guys going to do the summer walking city thing for your anniversary this year? Um, or has he decided backcountry backpacking is the way to go? Uh, oh, yeah, that is that weekend. Mm. Oh, jeez. I'm glad I remember your wedding I'm date. So, I'm, I'm, I'm so the one who got messed married. up about what weekends or when. <laughs> I'm no. not, because I wanted to go to the fall harvest thing at the at the Lower Fort Gary with you. And you're like, I can't. It's my wedding anniversary. I believe my response was, screw your wedding anniversary. I'm going to go to the fall harvest market thing. Uh, the, the plan is we're going to go to Thermia because we got some gift certificates for wedding presents. Okay. So we're going to use those up for our first year anniversary. I just like to make fun of her. Sure. You're a married person. You can't hang out with your friends. You got to go do anniversary things. I do yeah. the same thing to all yeah, my I friends. Yeah, I do. <laughs> no, and Terry does it too. Like, yeah, whatever. Anniversaries. <laughs> How dare I have How an anniversary? <laughs> How dare a year goes by and we Why would mark it as a special occasion? Things. That's crazy talk. Why would you do that? Sorry, and I uh, messaged the other crafty girls. And they're like, mm, yeah, we could do that. And Tara was like, yeah, I don't think Kane's in town. Her husband works out of town. So <laughs> I'm like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do want to go for the record. It's just you the husband will pout. <laughs> the husband will pout. He will pout. Which is and I know this, so, you know. Sad. Minor sacrifices for relationships. I'll take lots of photos and share them with you so you can have, what is that, the fear of missing out? FOMO? FOMO. Yeah. Hashtag FOMO. Hi, we'll, we'll create some FOMO for you. Okay, good. Good. Great. <laughs> the following Saturday, my parents are in town, and we're doing the uh, electronic yeah. knit thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. not sure how that's going to work. I might be running a good 10, 15 minutes late because mom wants to go to the farmer's market. Okay. Now, when my dad's driving... We get at the farmer's market and we're parking by 8 a.m. Mom's not awake then. So <laughs> she's just mobile. <laughs> so my mom doesn't do mornings. So we'll be doing the farmer's market, but we might not leave till 1130. And it's about a 20 minute drive home. Okay. Yeah. So I might be getting on a couple minutes late. All right. We will endeavor not to be late, but I may have my niece with us. And she loves shopping farmer's markets with her papa because my father can't say no. Mm -hmm. So she comes home with all the things. <laughs> it's fine. So it might be a struggle to get papa and his granddaughter out of the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just fine. Me and my mom are just as bad. We buy just as much stuff and not all of it we need. But we're on, we're on very specific hunts. We have to start the morning. I start it with some organic fair trade coffee. Mm. Because where am I? I'm at a local farmer's market. Of course that's what I'm getting. Yeah. Uh, and we have to end the day with uh, iced, uh, the, the lemonades, the fresh lemonades. Yeah. 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 Those are also good. Yeah. yeah. And then we have to go through and I want to look at the adult boring stuff, according to my niece. Handmade soaps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things that you get interested in when you're an adult. 
Yeah. Like at one point, when do vegetables become fascinating? I didn't like them as a child. I love them now. I know. Like when did that happen? Well, that uh, that salad I brought to Knit Club would not have been nearly so good if it wasn't farmers market vegetables. Oh yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. I didn't eat any. I was already overheated. I'm sorry. It's fine. <laughs> I rambled. I've already derailed us. Yeah, that's fine. I'm this conscious. About less than an hour after getting out of bed. I actually didn't get out, up, and to shower until you said you were on your way. I have been up less than an hour. <laughs> wow. This is a very strange day. Mm -hmm. Well, let's move on to what we're working on then. Sure. We actually have the same number of projects. Which is not normal. No. It's abnormal. Who wants to go first? You can. I, I always can. have to go first because okay. more projects. <laughs> I will go first today. I can just stop in the middle of this row because it's fine. <clears throat> I am working on a sock yarn mitten for my brother for Christmas because he requested a pair of mittens. And he is very knit worthy. And he wanted a pair of mittens that can go underneath other mittens when it gets really, really cold. I kind of just want to ask for Charlie to send me his measurements so I can knit him up. Old Grandpa Samantha's cardigan because I don't think he'll ever make it there. I, I feel like that one man day, needs but yes. an, an old man card. Yeah, Get his measurements does. when he graduates from his uh, master's. Okay. I've made him a, a, a Gramps cardigan for him to graduate so he can <laughs> literally go to old man master degree. <laughs> oh, that's happening. I got a couple of years. I can. Charlie's not a big man. I can do that. And there's no boyfriend sweater curse involved because we're not dating. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's boyfriend is an adorable man. <laughs> uh. I think he'd be super into that. He's been bugging me to make him an old man cardigan right. for years. I mean, you're buying the pattern and yarn. I'll just make it for you. You know what? I probably already have the pattern. Done. I'm really sure there's something in an interweave medium? magazine. Yeah, probably. Yeah, like easily. I can't see. He's, he's like about my size. Yeah, so I can't see him being any bigger than a man's medium. Like a man's yeah. smaller medium. I mean, for sure we'll have to get his his uh, chest width measurements so we yeah. get the shoulder set properly and his arm length and stuff. But, oh, done. Done. I'm planning for stuff that's happening years down the road. Jeez. <laughs> anyway, so uh, this year I'm making a pair of mittens. I've got about a three inch two by two rib cuff. There's no pattern for this. I just looked at a bunch of patterns and went, yeah, I kind of get the gist. I'll make it up. So I started with that's a... That's The Joy of Mittens. It is. I believe that's a book, The Joy of Mittens. Is it a book? I think so. Well, if it is a book, I feel like I need to own it now. <laughs> I think that it has like fancy color work mittens or something. Listen. Listen, Skein Deer Knits does the gear long mitten along where you make six uh, pairs of Icelandic colorwork mittens in a year. That sounds amazing. I want to make her mittens. The patterns are so freaking cute. I'm like, oh, it'd be such a good way to dive into colorwork yeah. before nose diving into that fingering weight colorwork sweater you showed me the other day, <laughs> which that's going to happen. Uh -huh. So I'm like, mmm, cred muffin. Yeah, hats or mittens would be a good way to start. I started with a hat myself. I'm thinking that's a better way to do it. Anyway, so this is a tubular cast on, so it just has a nice, nice edge that just rolls in on itself. Um, it's super stretchy. And I learned that uh, despite when you cast on a tubular cast on, it's one by one rib. You can make it be two by two rib. Really? Yeah. Huh. So I've got a two by two rib. That's really cool. Um, and then I just went roundy roundy a little bit in some stockinette. And now I'm continuing in stockinette and making a thumb gusset. And then I'll just go roundy roundies to the top and then figure out the finger decreases, which I might pull back a few times until I figure them out. Or, you know, I'll just actually look at a pattern and figure it out. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We shall see. So this is Mitten the First. Oh, and he wants the stripes matching because this is a self-striping yarn. Of course he does. Of course. I did ask him. This was a choice that I allowed him. So. Oh, okay. So it's out of this white, ice blue, dark blue, stripey yarn. Is that the Lang sock? Yeah. It's yaw wool. Yaw wool. Lang yaw wool. Oh, man. The wool is <laughs> amazing. Uh, us making fun of the name is just because we can't pronounce yes. diddly. I think it's... It's Swiss? What did we determine? It was Swiss? I think we said it was Swiss, didn't we? Yes, made in Italy for a word I can't pronounce in Switzerland. Okay. <sighs> it probably has... Oh, here we go. It has content. It's... 
I'm seventy five percent something glad and twenty five percent something else. I'm going to assume that's wool and nylon, respectively. <laughs> Go to I'm glad it has content. I need for it to be nothing but air. Sure, wool. Oh, virgin wool. There we go. Seventy five percent virgin wool or lame vierge, lana virgin, lana sheer wool. I uh, yeah, it's oh god, I can't even. That's not even an English alphabet. That's not even a Latin alphabet. That's something else. I really can't read that. <laughs> We do the exact same thing at Icon, by the way, where we see things in Japanese. We're like, hmm, let's try to puzzle out that word. We're always wrong. My sister and brother-in-law went to the Momo store in St. Vital. Yeah. <gasps> she got mochi. <gasps> and mochi? I, she got mochi that was so good I ate the strawberry one and I didn't even care it was strawberry flavored. Whoa. You don't like strawberry, and though. I am not a fan of strawberry. Whoa. So Must be a really good mochi. I asked my brother in law if we could go back and if he could take me. He's like, Yes, yes, I can. I'd like to go back. He's like, Because you'll try things like green tea flavored anything. I'm like, I really will. Well, it's pretty hard to go wrong with green tea flavored stuff. In my mind, yeah, and matcha, because I like those flavors. So if he wants to go read ingredients labels and try more weird Japanese food, in his words. And I went, Sure, I'm game. Nice. So I get to go to the Momo store soon. I mean, I could legit just put myself on a bus and go. But it's more fun to explore those sorts of things with someone else. It is. Yep. So, I will take my six foot three brother-in-law with me. <laughs> <laughs> we have to look like a couple when we're out because we do nothing but bicker like siblings. <laughs> uh, I've gotten the occasional Mrs. Melnick and I'm like, no brother-in-law, not, not my husband. That one married my sister. <laughs> no thank you. <laughs> Love him as a brother, Lord. No. Mm -hmm. No, we like very different types of men. So that was what I was working on. Sucks. And then we got derailed. When don't we get derailed? Uh, what are you working on? I'm working right now on my fingering rate version of the Endless Summer Shawl. Uh, it is, the Endless Summer Shawl is actually a maker's release for the Mount Topa Fiber Festival this year. So it is a part of the Maker's Collection. So they, uh, Fiber Festival highlights uh, local knitting designers and um, indie uh, dyers. So I got together with Daria from Cloud9 Fiberworks because she really loved the shawl when she saw it. And we last minute have flown together <laughs> a pattern and colorway collection for it. So she's working on the DK weight version in uh, the colorway. That she's gonna have kits for and I am doing a fingering weight version double checking to make sure that it can be a one skein wonder the fingering weight version and it can be so by the next time I record this will be published so you guys will be able That's to find crazy. it on Ravelry so uh, if you pay or watch for next episode I will for sure at the very least make sure that this link gets put down in the description box below for everybody and uh, It'll be out, and then I will immediately turn around and buy some of Daria's yarn and DK and make a third one in her color, because she's a really pretty colorway. So I want to make yet a third one. So I am currently working my way through that. It didn't exist last week, and I've put on a fair bit of progress this week. It went with us to Icon. I love how rainbowy that yarn is. This is an, without this actually is being a rainbow. rainbow. Yeah, this is another one of Daria's skeins. I love her sea and enemy wall colorways. But they're quite heavily variegated, so I was always wondering what to do them in. So I really wanted to see if this would, and as I open up the lace here quite gently, like I'll more aggressively block than just stretching it with my fingers. And so it just, pretty. it opens up so nicely, and those colors showcase so well. So it's like, yes, for that one skein of really pretty variegated yarn it's that you bought that you don't know what to do with. So, so variegated. And oh, it's like, so variegated. It's like, I don't so... even know where to start with the colors. It is a sea and enemy wall. Like, it that's, is, that's it's what a tropical it is. rainbow. It is a tropical. That's a good call. A tropical rainbow. So, as you can tell on my five millimeter Chowgu needles, I'm almost at a full length 40 inch cord. Nice. That's yeah. going to be massive so when you're done. I'm, um, it's an asymmetrical shawl, so it does nothing but increase. But when you grab the two endpoints, it sort of makes a triangle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've already made the tassels, so I'm good to just keep going because I've figured out that's the trick. Just make your tassels first. Yep. And they're never worried about it. So I need to have this done in the next couple of days because it needs to be washed and blocked and ready for photos on like Monday. I'm like, hmm, I got a day. 
Guess what I'm doing today, guys? <laughs> yep. Finishing the shawl. And it's so color variegated, I actually have to use clippy stitch markers to keep track of how many times I've done the pattern repeats. <laughs> Clue is, I'm sitting here and I'm trying to count and it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It looks so good. I'm so excited. I'm also excited to do another one, and another DK one in Daria's colors because they're so pretty. Yeah. Oh, I so I want to make that one, actually, not going to lie. Oh, it just whips so fast. Well, you saw me working out of the convention. You just pull it out anywhere. Yeah. Having said that, it's a super simple eyelet lace, so Diana will struggle with it. But uh, yes, it's yes. a super simple eyelet lace. It's an it's a beginner shawl. <laughs> Everyone else will have no issues with it whatsoever. Yeah. I will struggle incredibly hard with it. The official unofficial intern. Mm -hmm. uh, she's um, been working on a project because I had one floating around and she needed something to do, so I sent it out for her. Yeah. 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 We can't do stitch count markers on simple eyelet laces, but we can do thigh high cabled socks. I'm like, you know what? Everybody's got something. <laughs> <laughs> that they just do like, why is this so hard? How does one knit? What, lace charts? Sure. Cables? No problems. First garment I ever make, a sweater? Easy peasy. You want me to do two by two ribbing? Nope. Absolutely not. Will not happen. I will F it up every time. Every time. Now for me, I can two by two rib in the dark, but you want me to do some like... Knit, what, knit two together yarn over, you're hooped? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Everybody's got that one thing where you're like, what? <laughs> how does one even live? Like, this is, how is this a thing? <laughs> it's fine. I look forward to hearing you complain about it. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. I guess it's my turn to talk about it a thing, isn't is, it? It is, since we have three projects. It's not just the Jocelyn show. All right. I continue to make progress on my Find Your Fade. Uh, huge amount of progress. Oh gosh, it's so tangled. Hang on. Uh, but I am now uh, officially done with the truffle colorway and I am, I believe, fully into, hang on, one, two, one, two, three, four. Yes, I am now fully into the cinnamon dolce colorway. I like that cinnamon dolce colorway. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't make an enormous amount of progress, just like eight rows or so, but I am done with the truffle colorway, and I have completely faded into the gold, and that means that I am on my last large amount of yarn for this shawl. It, the end is very much in sight. <laughs> I really like how this fade came out. Like, oh, it turned out really well. It did. Yeah. So I'm I'm super happy with that stripey bit there. <sighs> so this is the Find Your Fade by Andrea Mowry that I started as a knit along uh, two years ago. I believe we. Uh, estimated a two-year start date based yeah. off your Ravelry page. I I could I could look it up. I am not going to. So approximately two years, and it uses travel yarn from all over the place with a skein of yarn from home in the middle. So it's there and back again, or something fading there and back again. I still haven't decided on a project name. It's almost done. I and I might even use a little bit of my own hand spun for like the last twenty grams that I need that I haven't decided on the color yet. Okay. Because, yeah, I just need, like, 10 or 20 grams or so to finish off the last, like, half section. You've got scraps, so, like... Yeah, so I will either use a, I will use a scrap or some of my hand spun. It's coming along. It's almost done. I might actually finish it in time for uh, Stash Dash. Yes, that's the close to the 24th of August. Yeah. I'm assuming you're not taking that big bulky thing to Vegas. I haven't decided. I suspect I will take the Celtic mitts. That makes sense. Uh, because that'll be excellent airplane knitting. Because it's small but also complicated looking so people are extra impressed. Uh-huh. But also I have nothing else to focus on on the plane. <coughs> that makes more sense. <coughs> oh, goodness gracious. I'll have my mittens traveling with me every day because they're just roundy roundy. Roundy roundy two by two and stockinette. That's it. That. They're effectively socks. Vanilla socks. Yeah. Yeah, once you're done your thumb gusset, that's... Yeah. Go to do your decreases. <laughs> I have missed just going roundy-roundy with fancy yarn. <laughs> <laughs> Too many patterns? Hmm? Too many patterns? Yeah. I've... There's something just very zen about basic vanilla patterns with some fancy yarn. In my definitely not the opera bag. Okay. It's a CBC program. 
Um, I got it at Swag a couple years ago doing, unshockingly enough, a CBC event. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I have a bunch of Arrow yarn. Now, this is that Barocco yarn that is the alpaca that's blown through the nylon tube. I only have one left on the skein. I think it's got a ball band around it. Don't know what my cat just did. It is 65% alpaca, 20-something percent nylon, and 7% wool. Anyway, it's a nylon tube, and the fibers are blown in the tube, which makes a bulky weight yarn that is ridiculously lightweight. Ridiculously lightweight. It's from Barocco. Uh, it's called Arrow, and I had picked up a couple of commissions to use this yarn from a good friend of mine. So I'm working on the second one. And because I know who it's for, I'm playing around with pattern ideas, because I can. It's just a basic infinity scarf that I'm going to knit in one long tube and then knit together, like sew it together, because that's how I prefer to do my infinity scarves. So what I've been doing is I've been holding it double right now, which makes it super bulky <laughs> mm -hmm. and using a 10 millimeter needle. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on there. I've got it looped on the end somehow, which happens to me a lot because it's so, so fluffy. It just, <laughs> the stitches actually get hooked oh, on go. the back of the knitting needle. So I'm actually, actually using my granny's knitting needles that I got years ago that live in a very cool crocheted from the 40s knitting nice. zipper bag thingy, 40s or 70s or something like that. It's got a, one of those wonderful flower patterns where you're like, whew, this got here legit. Uh, <laughs> so I've been holding it double and doing garter and drop sticks, drop stitch sections because that looks really nice. And now I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to make some lighter, not that this is, like, does that feel like a super bulky? Good. No. Like, like it's not heavy like a super bulky. It's like but maybe like, DK. It's like it's thick like a super bulky, bulky so yeah. like it's squishy like one. Yeah. But yeah. it's light like yeah. fingering weight. I know. Isn't it's that crazy. Great? It's amazing. So now I'm going to make slightly thinner sections to make a different texture release because this is definitely going to be all about texture and feel. So uh, it is tall and stacked so that when you have it on your neck, it squishes up really good because I want you to be able to wear it in the wintertime. Nice. So we continue on this. I, I had to do something different. I was going crazy. I, could, I needed a non-fingering weight project. I've been doing a lot of fingering weight projects, guys. So I, I pulled out some stuff for wintertime. So I'm hoping to have this one done inside of the next week here or so. So that uh, the next time my friend's in town, he can pick it up and stick it in his pile for Christmas presents. Nice. That I like, so nice. yeah, it's, it's a nice muted colorway and holding, holding a double marls it, which just mutes the colorway changes even more. It looks really good. And the drop stitches just pop nicely. Yeah. Cause you get this nice long rank of color. Anyway, I got, when I say I have like a lot floating in here, I mean like I got a, I got a lot floating in here. Yeah. So, but it's not going to take me very long to knit up because I'm using 10 millimeter needles and these tubes are so fluffy. So fluffy. That's very fluffy. So happy. So I am making part. There is no pattern for this. I'm literally making up as I go. But the lady I am making it for loves a lot of art deco stuff. Like she loves okay. a lot of texture changes and color changes and stuff. And she's really into bold statement scarves. So I'm like, yes, it's a me person. I like bold statement scarves. So I'm making one for her. Nice. Oh, because she is knitworthy and I love being able to help my friend out. And he likes very unique individual gifts. He went hunting for vintage metal John Deere tractor toys for his nephews interesting yeah like he, that's that's the sort of thing he goes for the sort of toy that lasts forever well yeah because it's a sort of toy he grew up playing with like i think one of his nephews got like a lincoln log set that he picked up vintage somewhere so like he has a lot of money for kids to play with these things <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't like giving stuff you can just find at the store mm -hmm. he's, he's never been that way so now that he's discovered that i will knit for money 
things. This is a great program. I think next year I'm doing more stuff, <laughs> which is fine because I will do commissions for him. So it's all right. I don't take on many because it takes time. And most of my commissions come from my family. As they discover, I can knit. Fair enough. My uncle's wife has uh, wife, girlfriend, girlfriend has uh, put in for dishcloths. <laughs> I went, okay. <laughs> All right, shall I talk about my last strange project? Yeah, yeah, go for it. It is a crochet and sewing project, uh, but it involves no yarn whatsoever. Uh, I believe it was last week I had talked about how I was entering... No, it was week two before? weeks ago. Two week weeks before. ago I talked about how I was entering a freestyle beard contest at the hacker convention that I'm going to next week. And so this project has been through several prototypes that didn't even really make it out of my head before I realized they were wrong. So I'm no That's longer using that tubing. Kind of how that works. And instead of putting wires through tubing, crinkle, crinkle, plastic noises, I have crocheted strands of lights. These are just dollar store LED lights. They were like $3 a strand. And I have crocheted them together so that the lights are extra dense. Let me turn them on here. They're really bright and fun. Oh, hello. Yeah. So it's just some silver wire with little LED lights. And I crocheted them together so the lights were closer together, but also the wire was stronger and more poseable. Okay. So that I can get curly Q mustache shapes out of it. You're mustaching your beard? Yeah, I'm going to have like a curly Q mustache and then like some curly have beard been, parts. Have you been watching Queer Eye season four too? No. I binged it. Oh, why? Do they have light-up beards with curly cues? Jonathan has a heck of a mustache with a curl going on. Oh, I just love curly mustaches. His, his stash is... You, you'd appreciate his stash. Oh, maybe I should watch this then. I think you'd enjoy the TV show. It's on Netflix. You're mm. welcome, guys. Okay. It isn't... It's one of those good-for-humanity hug-you hug TV shows. Yeah, you're just like, ah, oh, I'm inspired to love people and give out free hugs. <laughs> like, that's one of those kind of like, oh, oh yeah. that sounds so wholesome. Oh, it's so good. Ah, oh, I really enjoy it. And, and how can you go wrong with five gay guys? You can't. You really can't. You really can't. They're just a really good group of people. So I'm just, I really enjoy watching them. Oh, that sounds lovely. To my delight, I discovered season four the other day and I was like, what? And I watched all of it in one go. I'm like, oh, I gotta make more quicker. <laughs> I need more of them in my life. Nope, it's upside down again. Nope, nope, nope. There we go. Are you ready to set up now? Yeah, we're ready to set up. What you're doing? Yeah. Get your mask. So I needed a way of attaching it to my face. And now that I don't have the heavier vinyl pipes and it's just little strands of wire, I'm like, hmm, I can just use your mask. Stitch it to this mask that I got at Icon two years ago. Yep. I guess one year ago. I think I got it last year. Mm, was it last year? I think so. I can't remember. I don't know. Anyway. So I have one of these, um, are they like fashion air filter masks? <laughs> like, I don't know what they're properly called, but they're like the surgical masks, but they get worn like more as a fashion statement by like Chinese people. Uh, it's also cause, uh, air quality can be poor. So some people yeah. with problems, it's also a bit of a hygienic thing. Cause, yeah, yeah. Cause the smog there is ridiculous. Yeah, it's anyway. It's quite bad. So it, it serves several functions. You happen to definitely be wearing a fashion one. Purely a fashion one. I got it at a anime convention in north america it's, there's it's, no way it filters anything it's black with grinning teeth on it yeah and then yeah. Little, little dribble of like yeah so i'm like yeah smexy 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 <clears throat> anyway so basically i'm gonna be taking this strip of wire i'm gonna poke a little hole under where like my nose is here so i can thread the wire to the battery pack through it and then I'll be attaching it with a few stitches on here so i can have like a curly q mustache sticking out the side of my face like well, okay, well, this one's really droopy right now, but I'll figure it out, and I'll, like, stitch it on, so I'm gonna have, like, a mustache. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. This is my strange project that I'm working on. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Get, get photos. Oh, there will be many photos. Oh, Fear gosh. not. This, we need yeah. photos. Those so I'm gonna to be sitting Instagram in a stories. hotel room uh, with wire cutters, needles and thread, and um, electrical tape. Because I don't have a soldering iron. Uh, finishing this in Vegas next week. It's going to be good. Ridiculous. Uh, hey, somebody sent me a message or something. Uh, your phone is complaining that it's at 15%. Oh. Yeah. We might need to plug that in. I or else don't have a cord. I don't have a plug in that long. So okay, well, we should talk faster, faster then. Record faster! It's okay. 
<laughs> all right that that is my last very strange project <laughs> all right last but not least i'm still continuing to plug away at the twin it up shawl because it's beefy guys Ooh. can you tell i have a metal bowl on my coffee table that rings forever it really does it's a really good metal all right now i knew i was going to have to leave the elizabeth bennett yard behind because i would run out and i was right so I have my little bit left of my Midnight Cravings from the Girl Next Door, which is a white speckled yarn. And I have added in another Midnight Cravings yarn, and this one is French Roast or Espresso. I can't remember. I think it's French Roast. It's a nice dark coffee brown, guys. That's, that's what it is. It's a really good neutral to go with that creamy white. Yeah. And I wasn't super, super, super sure until I started working on it. So, and now I'm really sure. So this that thing goes good. on four miles. It really miles. does. Miles. Mr. B knocked it off the, the desk the other day and he was so worried that he'd knocked stitches off because he didn't understand there were two sets of needles going on. So on one end I've gotten down to my third third wedge in my my white and then you just keep going through the middle and you just keep going. Guys this covers my whole body when I work on it. This is not a travel project. There is alpaca in here. My red and my blue are my Elizabeth and my Bennett. You guys have heard me talk about the shawl for ages. But I've made it, I made it through my blue section, my third wedge, and I'm two thirds of the way through my first brown ribbing section. Now I knew I'd have to use more yarn because I hacked the pattern. So I'm not doing the ribby eyelet lace because I chose colors that are too dark for me to work in to do that. So I am doing their uh, bumpy sections on repeat instead of where the ribby eyelets should be. So I definitely have a different looking shawl. I've also, because I mirror knit, my wedges are upside down, <laughs> which is fine. It looks good and I like it. And it just means mine's different from everybody else's. So I have a very unique twin up shawl. So I need to finish my decreases on my, my bumpy section till I get to my stitch marker. And then I will be on to the striping end piece. That's still a fair bit of progress. That's over eight inches of fingering weight knitting in one week because I was in the blue and I needed to do a stripe of red. So like I did a bunch. This that is week. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was in the blue when we talked, I hadn't, I wasn't done my blue yet. So I made a lot of progress, not as much as I wanted, but I did make a lot of progress. So this continues to be the sit by the computer while I'm editing and doing stuff project. Cause I now super duper have it memorized. And uh, when it does need to go live in its bag because it's causing boys panic and fear that they've dropped stitches, it lives in my dragon fiber bag, which is coffee. It goes nicely with the uh, brown yarn. It goes excellent with the coffee colored yarn. But that is the last project I've been working on this week. Excellent. In the interest of not finishing before we run out of battery, <laughs> let's plow along into wool gathering. Mm. I'm away next week in case you <laughs> hadn't figured that out yet. Uh, we'll for sure still have video podcasts up, and I will try to get the audio up. No promises, you guys. <laughs> uh, a heads up reminder that for all of our Patreon members, we will be doing the uh, electronic knit in Saturday. It'll be noon Saturday our time on the 24th of August. So if you are not a Patreon member, we invite you to come join. Uh, and if you are, you guys have already heard about it. We send out the link. I occasionally remember to even send out a message two hours in advance to remind everybody it's happening. Sometimes I don't. And uh, we go from there, but that's going on. And uh, if you are a Patreon member, keep an eye out. We have, I'm filming the first of the Patreon exclusive videos in the next week or two. So there will be a additional video for our Patreon members every month. So I have gotten everything else ironed out. So now I just need to sit down and start filming. Yay! Yay. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see how that upload works. So I won't promise a specific date for that. I'd like to be able like on the 24th go, and don't forget the video is up for the month, but I, we've met me in electronics. Something could go sideways. I still have a couple parcels hanging out in Ontario. I don't know what they're doing in Ontario. So if you're still awaiting a prize from us, it's in Ontario. Not sure why it's still there. And I can't quite get an answer that makes much sense, but I don't understand the postal service. So it's a thing. All right. I mean, it'll get there when it gets there, guys. It's it's out of my hands at this point. Uh, Asa, did I do that right? She'll correct me if I did it wrong. Correct me if I did that wrong, sweetie. 
your bag is cut and prepped, the sewing machine works, it's done all its testing, so this afternoon, more likely this evening if I'm honest, your bag will get sewn so I can drop that in the mail for you next week. Alright. Ta-da! And knowing my luck, the ones that have nothing but trouble will still be sitting in Ontario and also will have her bag and she's like, not even in the country. Because that's that's how that project's worked since January. It has been nothing but a cluster. Like I'm I'm just I don't I don't even know anymore. I don't I give up? I just I just don't know. Uh, <sighs> it's fine. I do what I can, and I just gotta let it go after that. I think that's it for me for wool gathering. It's just reminders for people. Yep. And a please, please do not message us on Ravelry expecting a response have to email us or you have to get a hold of us on other social medias both of us are inconsistent at Ravelry at best at but we definitely best. check email but we definitely check the emails and we definitely check the Instagram so we can answer messages that way we don't share a ton of information if it's a publicly asked question because some stuff is private guys so if you have a, a personal or a private question just send it to us via email but if you do it via Ravelry there is no guarantee when we'll get back to you if we get back to you at all we just don't check we're such good podcasters. It is the last thing on my mind. I really don't need another social media outlet. That's not what I use Ravelry for. I use it as a database. So I forget. Mm. And by the end of my day, my eyes are shot. And I can't. I can't do it. Can't do it, you guys. And I'm tired of my screen reader. And I don't want to hear them anymore. No. I've been doing accessibility stuff at work and like, okay, so if I code this in this way, does the screen reader work better? And I have to listen to him again. I'm like, he's annoying. It really is. What I'd love to be able to do is to go for people when they're testing for accessibility is to turn their screens to black. Because then you truly understand the accessibility because you don't have a screen to look at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Most people won't do that for a very good reason. <laughs> it's hard to function. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm like, duh. <laughs> it's kind of the point, guys. <laughs> yep. Uh, right. I suppose leaves books and events. Yeah. I'm still have, listening to podcasts. I have a bunch of podcasts. Uh, I haven't actually been reading any books this week. Well, I'm enjoying The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, but I am at 32 hours of 45. So I still got a ways to go. <laughs> Wow, you I made a solid effort trying to finish that. Oh, it's, it's a several week long book at 45 hours, so I put in at least 10 hours a week. It should only take me a month. <laughs> <laughs> I could listen to it faster, but I'm enjoying the book, so I'm not, I'm not looking to rush that. And I'm uh, still re-listening to SPQR by Mary Beard, which is a book about Roman life and the history of the Romans. So... If you like history, super good book. If you're not into history, you really won't enjoy it because that's what it's about. So, cool. Um, I picked up the Ologies podcast that Jocelyn talked about last week. Was I wrong? It's excellent. I learned mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. graphology and graph analysis. Yeah, I haven't listened to that one yet. It's fascinating. I know. I really want to buy stationery now. Okay, listen, I always want to buy stationery. It's back to school time. We could totally go buy stationery. This is a slippery, slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. It's not a slope. It's a woo and we're off. Because <laughs> they also do colored pens and post-it notes and it just end up with stuff I don't need but it doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 That's going to happen. Uh, other things I've been enjoying, uh, Sawbones, a marital, a misguided marital guide of, shoot, it's about medicine and like the history of medicine and like okay. weird medical stuff, but without being graphic or gross in any way. I am super triggered, is that the right word? I don't know. Yes. I'm super sensitive to medical stuff yes. and I that do not- be a trigger. Okay. Yeah. Just and, like being that kind of sick is a panic yeah. attack inducing for me. Yeah. I, uh, if, if medical stuff gets too graphic for me, I just faint. Um, <gasps> and I, I have, have no issues with this podcast. I can listen oh, to it while hey. I'm driving. I'm totally fine. Does it talk about that thing? No, I don't think so. Oh, I might be able to listen to it then. Uh, the last one, they were just answering questions from listeners. And so it was just a random set of questions. It was really interesting. Ooh, I'll have to look it up. One of the questions was like, I had this bone part removed from me and I wanted to keep it, but they said I couldn't. Why couldn't I keep my own bone? Yeah. It was just like really interesting stuff like that. And, like histories of medicines and medical companies and like, it's fascinating. Oh, yeah. 
I think that'd be very interesting. Yeah. Done and done. So, Sawbones. Good podcast. Uh, the other one that I've picked up is the Ladybug podcast. It's a new one. It's four women debugging the tech... The, no, I can't say any taglines today. <laughs> debugging the tech industry. Good thing we don't have a tagline, hey? <laughs> Do you have a brand tagline? Does your brand have a tagline? My brand does not have a tagline. Oh, you need a tagline. I know. Every brand needs... I have a tagline. Oh, yeah? Living proof that going blind doesn't mean slowing down. Ah, good tagline. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have one yet. You need a tagline! Programming is magic? So. No, that's just common sense. <laughs> it's the only tweet I've done that had any traction. <laughs> you're not consistent, my dear. It's just not about... I don't know. Anyway. It's hard. But yeah, if you're interested in women in the tech industry, or just, you know, the tech industry, uh, Ladybug Podcast is... Uh, I've listened to all of one and a half episodes, but I'm enjoying it so far. I will listen to the Ladybug podcast when you listen to the Ancient World. Which ones? Is that the four hour long? No, no, no that's hardcore history. That's hardcore history. <laughs> yeah. No, the Ancient World is literally the ones where it's like, here's an ancient Sumerian king, and we know three things about him, but it will consume a 20 minute long podcast. Yeah, I'm not into that. <laughs> totally fair. <laughs> <laughs> ah, hey, listen, it's all about tailoring your stuff. To match your personalities. And we share some things and we don't share others. And that is, this is fine. true. <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> it's right. Well, that's the space guy, right? I'm sure all of you guys looked at that message and went, oh, Jocelyn. <laughs> I was talking about Chris Hadfield. That It took me a moment, but I got there. <laughs> space guy. I knew You're he like, was famous for space. I just couldn't remember why. Just, you know, he's, he's only like the most famous Canadian astronaut right now. But he's not the most famous Canadian to me because it's not my area of interest. This is fair. My area of interest is history. Darn it. <laughs> and that's the way I likes it. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, wrap up with some events before the battery goes dead. I have no idea what the battery life is at. I don't know. I'm going to poke at this awkwardly for a second. Sure. Poke. Poke. No poking. Uh, well, 12%. Hey, we're doing fine. We're doing okay. We can do this. We can do this? We can do this. I all right. Put do you want to do events or shall I do it all from memory? Why is... Okay, there we go. We're focused on us again. Oh, were you focused on other things? Yes, I was focused on like the upper corner of the frame. Oh, jeez. <laughs> shall we do events? <laughs> Let's do some events. What's still going on right now? Uh, Stash Dash is still going on to the 24th of August. Okay. I'm making some good progress. I'm settling in. I, because it's a competition for yourself, I tend to not always post every year all of my stuff. But I'm looking like if I get some of my other stuff done, I'm comfortably sitting at about maybe 7K for the year. Nice. So, depends on how much I can get done as we get into August. So, we shall see, you guys. We shall see. I've got over a kilometer in the Twin Up Cal over a kilometer because I'm into my fourth skein of yarn of fingering weight yarn I believe it I think I was at I think I was at half a kilometer for the not a lot of rain in April shawl yeah I which got I still haven't blocked 800 meters in my first endless summer I have f over 400 meters in my second I finished my mallow which is over 1500 yards so it's 14 1.4 clicks so like I could comfortably reach 7k if I if I sit down and focus and get a couple of other things off my needles, which that's a really good place to be sitting. Yeah. For having set no goals for myself this year, other than to knit. <laughs> if I get these mittens and the fade done, then I think I might hit three. Woohoo! Which is what you did last year. Mm, I think I did. Did I do three last year? Yeah, because no. you had your shawl. Right. You had your wedding shawl, which yeah. was a lot of yardage. Yeah, it was. Cool beans. So that's run by the Knit Girls. It's run every summer while Laura is on summer break from school. Uh, in this case, it's three solid months. So I am looking forward to the wrap up of that and having a complete pile of stuff I have finished, which is always exciting. I'll take a picture of the giant stack and just post it on Instagram stories. I'm doing that. And then that also means that when, you know, after the 24th of August, I cast on all the things. You're just preparing for next year. I am. So that's going on. What else do we have going on? Oh, uh, I'm doing. The, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm doing the self striping sock along with the fiber friends. Do not work on my socks this week, you guys. I'm trying to get this done. <laughs> and I did eight inches on a <laughs> giant fingering witch. 
Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have the Across the Prairies, which I did not work on this week, and I don't think you even cast it on for. I haven't even wound the yarn. Oh, word. You guys. I don't know what I'm going to do with her. I'm going to run away. That's <laughs> what I'm going to do. Run away to another country. You can't. No, I could find you. Yeah, you can. <laughs> no, I can't escape you. <laughs> I, I, I would walk into Vegas. I would walk to where all of those uh, coders are. I'd stick my stick out and go, hey, I'm looking for Diana. She wears the red hat. They just help me because I have a cane. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be found so fast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I won't because Vegas is very warm and I want nothing to do with locusts. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not excited mm -hmm. about the locusts. Not, not, not pumped for that concept. No, thank you. I'll pass. Oh, I also don't drink or gamble. I don't gamble either. Um, and I don't honestly drink much while I'm there. Yeah. So I'm just like, I'm not sure if it would hold a lot of appeal for me. Like some of the shows would be nice to go see, but then I worry about how dark they are. Mm. So I don't know. Six and one half a dozen in the other. So yeah, and I think that's all of our knit alongs we're doing right now. We have ours. Which is the Across the Prairies with the three other podcasts. Do you remember the other podcasts? Cozy Up Knits, uh, Feather Stitches, yeah. and Tale of Two Knitters. Whoa, look at you go! Hey! <laughs> I had to go from west to east. Uh, that's fine. You do what you gotta do, man. <laughs> um, and then the self striping sock along I'm doing. I think that's it for knit alongs for us right now. Yep. There is the My Rhine Bipoc sweater. Yes. I am seriously tempted. Seriously tempted. I'm not going to rhyme back, but a lot of the sweaters that are featured for the uh, indie knitwear designers that they've oh, got on gorgeous. their list yeah. are stunning. I believe that's where I found that fingering weight one that I no longer remember the name of. Uh, I don't remember the name of it either, but I think we need to go track it down because I've got some single skeins of yarn, which I think would make great color work sweater with a nice neutral base. Mm. So it might just happen. Mm. And I love finding new to me designers. So done and done, I think. Nice. Also, it's a boxy style sweater, so I'd only be knitting it in like a medium anyway, because I prefer a fitted sweater. Fair. So not actually that ginormous in the end. But otherwise, I think that's really ball of yarn. I think that's it. There's the Manitoba Fiber Festival in September. Which is not a knit along. <laughs> it's not a knit along. It's an event. It's an event. Yes. Uh, we'll be there. I'll be there for both days. Um, might try to convince Diana to go for both days, because I think we'd have a grand old time. And it takes her a very long time to get through the Fiber Festival, and it keeps growing every year. So it might be time to commit to the second day. Or at least a half day. Well, yeah, but it's only open Friday in the evenings. Oh, is it? Yeah. Ah, I thought that was like a opens at noon kind of deal. No, no, no. Yeah. It opens up in the afternoon, so. Oh, well, yeah, I can probably do that. Yeah. And then there's Knit City in early October. October yes, 4th. 4th through 8th. Yes. Uh, I, the hotel's booked. We'll book the flights once we know for sure what uh, Red's schedule is like, so we'll know when both me and her are flying in and out. And with luck, Diana can join us. Even if Diana's flying in later because we go like earlier than she can leave because she's at work, that's totally fine. Yeah. So, not super sure when we're coming in and when we're going out, but we are coming. At least me and, me and Red are. Uh, and Diana's going to join if she can. See one of those uh, super budget flights go in and out of Vancouver? Oh yeah, you could totally get one of those. Yeah. We'll see what days though, because those are only like, there's only a few in a week. That, I think, is the downside to the super budget part. Yeah. Uh, me and Red will be flying Air Canada. Solid because choice. Because they have a very good program for accessibility. And I prefer being treated like a human. Just, just a preference I have. I, I think most humans prefer to be treated as humans. I'm really not in some some situations. It's very frustrating. Oh, yeah. I'm like, no, no, real human right here. Promise you. <laughs> Skipping security lines is pretty sweet. Though. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not the way to go about it, guys. Just, <laughs> just stand on the security line at the airport, and be glad you don't need to skip the security line at the airport because you make the employees nervous. <laughs> Oh gosh. All right. Otherwise, that's, yeah, that's really it till we get closer to the end of the year and I start talking about uh, the Grinch Lock. Yeah. Cool beans. That's got to be like the lightest event section we've had in ages. Do a lot of things are finally finishing. 
<laughs> of course, there'll be other knitting stuff going on. Oh, and fall, fall festivals and harvests and things start going on, and I attend a lot of those, but I tend not to talk about them too much. I like a fall supper. Those are good. I like harvest markets. I love Christmas markets. Those are also good. I love Christmas markets. I go to a ton in the city. A ton. So, I think that's it. All right. We'll wrap it up. Diana's going to go pack and just going to leave because she's off tomorrow. Yeah. Super early? No, actually, it's uh, in the afternoon. I don't have to be at the airport till like 2.30 in the afternoon. Nice. I know, and it's a direct flight even. Oh, my gosh. Right? That's the flight there is beautiful. Height of luxury. It really, it's gorgeous. Listen, gorgeous. Direct gorgeous. flights are worth it. Yeah, they are worth it. Couldn't get one on the way back, which sucks. But mm. it happens. Well, we did the same thing for Net City last year, and the flight out was, other than the landing, ooh. <sighs> and it wasn't the fall of the airplane. We just went from a high mountain altitude to below sea level. My sinuses did not appreciate that. I was going to be like that every time I land going uh -huh. into there because it's just too much of a an exchange too much of a change for me even in the pressured cabin so i'm like great ah. <laughs> i've felt that pain exactly once and i wish to never ever ever do it again uh, i'm gonna have to do it again every time i land in vancouver i suspect because it's just we literally go from mountain to below sea level in like Very less than quickly, a 45 yeah. minute span so it's just it's just too much for my sinuses <sighs> so i will uh Double up on my medications and try to keep my sinuses as pressure as low as possible to reduce the amount of pain. Yeah. And we'll go from there. <laughs> hey! I can take my CBD oils because it's legal in the country. Nice. And I can just kind of be on high pain relief before we even land. Should make that a lot easier. Done! Look at that thought process. So, I will say uh, until next week, I'm Jocelyn. And I'm Diana. And look forward to the special guest. Because no matter where your week takes you, don't, don't forget, forget to knit. Hold on, hold on, mitten. No, well, it's because you're tiny-handed humans. Don't take that long to knit a mitten. I like the cuffs extra long, though. And Charlie's hands are a bit bigger than mine, so. Well, that, just like, the short cuffs drive me nuts, because then there, there's always that gap between your coat and your cuff, and that That's gets why I made it. I made it longer so you can roll it up like that, and it's still, yes. like, decent. Yeah, no, But it can also call. keep it nice and tucked in. Good call. The longer cuff is always just more, it just needs to be standard. Uh, so I guess that's going to take forever. Yes, it is. I don't need gussets. I thought those were a good idea. You just knit tubes. You don't need a thumb. You, you really need a thumb. <laughs> you don't need a thumb. You super need a thumb. So much of our world is designed around the fact we have an opposable digit. It's not even <laughs> funny. <laughs> you can right. your brother. He does need a thumb and a <laughs> mitten. We'll see how that goes for you.